Welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting the series Electrochemistry for Researchers and Engineers. We have already spoken about fundamentals of electrochemistry, detail of cyclic voltammetry and also details of different electrodes those are used in electrochemical experiments. Here we are talking about different kinds of voltammetry and why they are used. Different kind of voltammetries are used in different electrochemical experiments covering multiple fields such as electrochemical sensors, energy storage devices and other related fields. So we have taken uh, eight different voltammetric principles. First is cyclic voltammetry. We have spoken a lot about it. You can uh, look at our videos on cyclic voltammetry and I hope these videos will help you. Then we have linear sweep voltammetry differential pulse voltammetry also called DPV square wave voltammetry it is also known as SWV chrono amperometry chrono potentiometry stripping voltammetry and fast can voltammetry so today we will be talking about the first four the very fundamental things of the first four which we have jotted down and later on we will be covering each and individual type I mean each and individual voltammetry in detail with specific research examples so that you can understand better about a specific type of voltammetry. Mostly when you are new in electrochemical research you are working on a certain project and you are not aware which voltammetry is to be used whether it's cyclic voltammetry or linear sweep voltammetry because in most of the cases what happens we talk to our fellow researchers and they suggest that you go for this particular voltammetry and right away we go for it but it is better that you understand the fundamental underlying principle you read about the related paper and then you choose your experiment and that is why this particular set of videos are being prepared so let us a review cyclic voltammetry i already discussed a lot about it but the uh, i mean the viewers who are new for them i just want to repeat this process so cyclic voltammetry is something where we actually try to find out a redox reaction which is happening in a reversible manner that means your uh, say the forward reaction is the oxidation and the backward is the reduction and we are cyclically changing the potential from say negative to positive that means increasing voltage as you can see here and then again positive value to a negative value that is decreasing voltage so when we go from a negative potential to a positive potential that means increasing the potential then we call it oxidation or oxidative scan or anodic scan and when we come down from a higher potential to a lower negative potential then we call it reduction or cathodic scan so this is a fundamental this, this is a fundamental what i can say methodology or guideline that has been given in previous literature and you have to follow that and what is uh, scan rate scan rate is nothing but the slope of this particular curve in a layman language how fast you are changing the potential because when you are changing a potential basically you are changing uh, with time now whether you are changing it faster or slower that will be determined by this particular slope and that is what is called scan rate it is very much important in cyclic voltammetry because if you change the potential faster then basically uh, the reaction kinetics may get hampered and all those things we have covered in detail uh, we are not going uh, here so let us uh, talk about the fundamental things of CV CV is ideal for studying a reversible or quasi reversible electrochemical reaction in for it gives information about redox behavior diffusion processes mass transport phenomena and kinetics Again, I am telling in previous videos, we have spoken a lot about how exactly the diffusion and transport or convection near to the working electrode affect this voltammetric curve. And from the nature of the voltammetric curve, we can actually tell whether the process is diffusion dominated, convection dominated or reaction rate kinetics dominated. So again, we will be talking more about them 
with specific research examples so that it becomes very much very much easier to comprehend so the third point which we have noted down here is quantitative analysis and precise measurement of electrochemical parameters such as peak potentials peak currents you you can see so this is a typical faradic cyclic voltammetric curve and this is the peak current and the voltage corresponding to that is called peak voltage so all those things you can calculate and again all those information we are certain i mean talk about the characteristic of the system so we can have those information we can analyze them and we can understand the characteristics of the system which is under investigation and that is what cyclic voltammetry is about the other point uh, which which we uh, noted here is the effects of surface modifications electrode coating or electrode material so you can also get information about all those things from cyclic voltammetric curve that is why it is very important in electrochemistry all of we know now <clears throat> where the application typical applications are we see most applications in electrochemical sensors redox behavior recognition experiments study of battery materials or any other energy storage materials uh, it is also important in corrosion science corrosion engineering it is important in catalysis because uh, heterogeneous catalysis or electrochemical catalysis the uh, in those cases we use that and that also involves say uh, your carbon capture say you are converting co2 into certain other valuable val valorized chemicals by some electrochemical process those processes are also characterized by cyclic voltammetry uh, you are say studying about deposition dissolution of species fabrication of thin films and you are trying to see the nature of the thin films how much electrochemically active they are in all those cases we use cyclic voltammetry now coming to another type of voltammetry another kind of voltammetry which is lsv or linear sweep voltammetry as the name suggests you can understand that we are changing something linearly and that linear change is nothing but the change of the potential say here you start with a certain voltage and you linearly go up to another voltage but unlike cv you don't come back from a higher potential to a lower potential you stop there and this is what is different from cyclic voltammetry or what i can say is this is half of the cyclic voltammetry process if you see here in cyclic voltammetry we had this total potential distribution but here in lsv we have the first half you can just relate it here so in the first half we will get uh, current information like this uh, i just want to recap again so this is not a ohmic kind of nature so you can see the potential is varying linearly but uh, the current is not linearly increasing say at the same time i can see that the current at some intermediate voltage is the maximum whereas the current at the highest potential which is this is not the maximum and that is what happens in typical electrochemical behavior whether it's faradic or non faradic so <clears throat> again why put i mean current we get at a particular voltage i mean why we get maximum current at a particular voltage that also we have discussed again we'll be talking about them so now coming to linear sweep voltammetry uh, what we study uh, with lsv basically uh, we prefer to use lsv for irreversible electrochemical reactions where the oxidation or the reduction process is irreversible or occurs at a very high over potentials again uh, what is over potential we'll be talking in a separate video uh, because this is beyond the scope of this particular discussion but it is important to understand the actual meaning of over potential qualitative analysis and rapid screening of redox processes if this is the target then we uh, prefer to use lsv other points which we noted here are the presence of electroactive species characterize redox behavior and assess the feasibility of electrochemical reaction those are always i mean those are also some of the targets of uh, lsv 
electrochemical process over a wide potential range and the final one is very important and that is fast scanning for time sensitive measurement this is very important we will uh, discuss it with a specific example in separate video where we only talk about linear sweep voltammetry applications again uh, from the last point uh, we took the first application that is fast electron transfer kinetics or current response at a constant scan rate of LSV curve. Determination of analyte concentration in solution, calibration of sensors, they are also used. Sometimes we use cyclic voltammetry, sometimes we use uh, LSV with specific examples we'll talk about in upcoming videos. Electroplating, electrochemical deposition, electrochemical reactivity studies and all. Now coming to uh, the process that is differential pulse voltage. So as the name pulse suggests, what we do, we give a pulse of potential and we look at the current. So the experimental arrangement is same, similar kinds of electrodes, electrochemical electrodes are used, uh, same kind of electrochemical cell, but what is difference the nature of applied potential. So where we are applying the potential, we are applying the potential at the working electrode where the heterogeneous reaction is happening so on that working electrode instead of giving a linearly varying potential we are giving a pulse like this and we are measuring the current so when the pulse you are starting say uh, in this uh, representation that is s1 and when we are stopping say in this particular plot that is point s2 you are calculating the current and then you are just taking the difference of I1 and I2 so again I1 is the current at the start of the pulse and I2 is the current at the end of the pulse and this particular kind of graph you will get for the current value and we are interested in knowing the delta I which is I2 minus I1 I already discussed what is I2 and I1 so DPV where we actually utilize that few points we have noted down so as this is a preliminary video I just I will just read them which are the most important points and we have systematically noted them down the first point is the detection and the quantification of analytes present at trace levels in complex matrices so this is very important you have to focus on the terminology trace levels of element that means very minute amount of components we want to detect by electrochemical methods there we uh, prefer DPV over other kind of voltage. The second point which we noted is selective detection of analytes based on their redox properties in a matrix, distinct potential windows and optimizing pulse parameters. We'll talk more about it in upcoming videos. The third point is resolving overlapping voltammetric peaks and separating closely spaced oxidation or reduction peaks. It is very important. So suppose you have performed cyclic voltammetry and you are seeing that the two there are two potential which are merging with I mean two curves, two peaks which are merging with each other, or sometimes you are getting a wider kind of. Uh, Peak, which might be because of overlapping two individual peaks so this kind of cases sometimes appear in those cases what you do uh, you choose a very particular potential window you put a pulse and look at the current value and then uh, I mean this way you can resolve the individual peaks and you can get more information about the system uh, the other point is studying adsorption desorption kinetics a rate constants, transfer coefficients, reaction orders, shape and magnitude of DPV peaks. We'll talk about all those points with specific examples in upcoming videos. But uh, as of now, it is to be understood that all those kind of information are possible to unearth by this DPV and this is a very useful technique in cyclic voltage in uh, electrochemistry. So the applications are again electrochemical sensing again which kind of electrochemical sensing the analytes which are present in trace, trace elements sometimes uh, intracellular detections uh, real-time detections and all 
food and beverage quality control controlling deposition rate morphology composition of deposited films or coatings real time analysis we already talked about it and quality assurance now we talk about square wave voltmetry it is kind of similar to dpv here we put a square wave you can see the square wave say this uh, those are the square waves which we have put so square wave of what so square wave of potential again where we are, we are applying this potential we are applying it onto the working electrode where exactly all the things that is the heterogeneous electrochemical catalysis is going on and obviously what we are looking at we are looking at the current response any kind of voltmetry you perform you put certain uh, certain kind of voltage on the working electrode and you look at the response and the response is the current response this is common for uh, any kind of voltmetry now a few notable points uh, which talks about what is wv offer the first point is rapid data acquisition and high throughput making it suitable for applications requiring fast analysis this point is little bit similar to the dpv but again we will take specific cases to uh, i mean make a difference between dpv and swv enhanced signal to noise ratio allows for the detection of low concentration analyte so here also if you want to detect very trace amount of analyte it is important again it is similar to dpv then <clears throat> few more points differentiation of closely spaced oxidation or reduction peaks this is again similar if you just uh, try to uh, yeah this particular point so you can see there are many similarities between these two uh, voltmetry processes but there are some differences as well so we have also noted the differences faster scanning speeds compared to the dpv so in swv the scanning speed is relatively faster easier to implement this particular one is e easier to impl implement less optimization than dpv again we should talk about a specific research paper that they describe this particular point compatibility with micro electrode this is very good in swv wide range of analyte concentrations without require, requiring adjustments to elect, uh, experimental parameter this is one of the advantages uh, over dpv and uh, 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 we we stop here today uh, we understand that in this particular video everything is informative we did not unearth much technical information but sometimes the information are also necessary because that is the starting point once we have the information then we can select a particular i mean select a definite or accurate process and then based on the technical knowledge we can implement it and get get our things done so now our task would be to unearth each and every type of voltmetry so initially we will do about those four which we have already discussed and later on we'll talk about the other four that is chrono amperometry chrono potentiometry stripping voltmetry and fast can cyclic voltmetry so all those things will come one by one i hope the series will be helpful to you again and uh, if so i request you to subscribe to our channel and support us in our ongoing journey thank you